Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. One villain was unlucky enough to meet our OP, who sent him straight to jail. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Steal $400 from me to buy iTunes gift cards? Go to jail. Not the best revenge, but anyway, some butt wipe managed to hack into my Walmart online account and purchase $400 worth of iTunes gift cards using my debit card. Big mistake. The iTunes gift cards were digital purchases and they were sent to my email. I notified my bank to cancel my cards and if they find out who did it, would I like to press charges? Yes, I would. The iTunes email states that if I do not redeem them within 12 hours, I get a refund. So 12 hours goes by, I get my $400 back, and these buttholes who clearly aren't that smart aren't getting their $400 worth of iTunes gift cards. I guess they thought the cards would be sent to them by mail, except, oh wait, they didn't even bother changing the shipping address, so it still wouldn't work out in their favor. Anyway, a day later, the bank found the crappy person who ordered the stuff because Walmart cooperated with them in tracking the IP of the crap stain who purchased from my account, Apparently, it's some dude in Bentonville, Arkansas, multiple states away from me. So I press charges and he's going to jail. Didn't get his $400 worth of iTunes because he didn't stop to think that they were digital and would be sent to my email, didn't change addresses, and didn't bother changing the account login to start with. At what point was this plan going to work? Usually, cops don't bother with this. I'm glad you got justice. And our second story. It's your truck after all. Background. Automobile insurance adjusters navigate a valley filled with mendacity and misrepresentation. For every 10 people I spoke with, at least half either omitted something material, lied, or committed fraud. If mendacity actually smelled like death, then I was surrounded by an ever-present stench. This story of malicious compliance is one way to clear the air. Helpful points. The named insured on a policy is required to follow the insurance policy contract to obtain coverage. Usually, the DMV will have the name of the lender on the title. A total loss vehicle is stored around 45 to 60 days before storage charges start. Story Mr. Debtor had a very fancy, new to him, fix or repair daily truck. That truck had every conceivable option and was ultimately an overpriced vehicle for an inexperienced driver. Surprise! Mr. Detter wrecked that POS, piece of excrement, within three months of purchasing it. If you're gonna wreck it, then go all out. This vehicle had a completely smashed front end with all airbags deployed, rollover damage to all panels, frame damage, broken glass, and of course, most of the engine compartment obliterated. In short, this car is called a total loss. The cost to repair the vehicle is more than 75% of its value and is not feasible to repair. Mr. Detter's minor physical injuries were eclipsed by the mortal blow received by his pride. He let me know how I was directly responsible for his drunk driving crash, his injuries, and that I needed to go to hell and live there. This was the first call. Lovely. Fast forward and I've given Mr. Detter an offer to resolve his total loss. I checked the DMV, no lenders listed on the title. Total loss call. Me. We're ready to settle this claim for you. Do you have the title? Mr. Detter. Yes. Me. Do you have a loan on the car? Mr. Detter. No, of course not. Insert long and misogynistic rant regarding his wealth, status, and superiority. Me. Thank you for your sharing. I can come to meet with you today, sign the title transfer, and give you the funds as you're listed as the owner. Mr. Detter. No, I have to get the title out of the safe deposit boxes at the bank. Over the next 60 days, Mr. Detter hems and haws about this title for over two months. Every week, I call him and mail a letter regarding the need to sign and mitigate damages, towing, storage, etc., which brings us to the phone call that let the fresh breeze in. The phone call that changes everything. 10.30 a.m. Monday. Me. Hi, it's been a while and I'm still needing that title from you to settle your claim. Mr. Detter, you're harassing me. No, sir, I'm fulfilling my obligations to you as a customer. I need to get your title to pay your claim back. Listen here, you're on my schedule, not the other way around. You think you're... Insert elevator music of curses, insults, and misogyny. 
Sir, I'm just trying to save you the hassle of dealing with the truck. Storage is starting soon. I'm going to call you when I'm good and ready. You'll get the title then. If you call me again, I'm filing a police report. It's your car. Deal with it. Phone call ends. Mr. Detter is giving me a clear and unmistakable indicator that he is not cooperating and is in violation of his contractual responsibilities. I can't abandon salvage. I can, however, do this. 11 a.m. Monday. Me. Hi, salvage vendor. You have Mr. Detter's truck on the lot. He's not ready to resolve his claim. Can you tow it back to 123 Detter Hell Lane? Yes, that's right. In his driveway, please. And with that, Mr. Detter's wondrous wreck of a vehicle is towed to his property. 1 p.m. Monday. What in the hell? The HOA called. You can't leave that in my driveway. I'll sue you. My neighbors are asking questions. Insert the rant. Hi, Mr. Detter. Sorry for the confusion. You see, the truck is yours after all. You're on the title and have refused to help me process this claim. As you requested, the vehicle will remain on your property until you're ready. My HOA is finding me. You need to pick up the truck now. No, you still haven't provided the title. When you're ready, let me know. Is there anything else I can help you with? Slowly deflating, he says, you can't do this. Sir, the truck is yours. You've refused to complete the paperwork, and I have no legal standing to store the vehicle indefinitely. Remember that Valley of Mendacity I mentioned? Brace. Three, two, one... A low growling noise is heard. I'm broke title pawn. I'm sorry? I don't have the title. It's it. I'm broke title pawn. I will not call him a liar. I will not call him a liar. I will not call him a liar. Oh, sorry. I misunderstood that you had the title. Can you give me their number? And with that, the dragon was slayed. I called the subprime high interest title pawn company. They were surprised to learn about the vehicle being wrecked. And the balance remaining, $3,200 and 13 months. Mr. Detter thought we were going to hold his wreck for 13 months? He signed and lender was paid. Oh, the vehicle, I had the signed paperwork in hand and had the vehicle picked up on Tuesday morning. One last detail I failed to mention, his round trip tow back to salvage cost him an additional $150. Non-cooperation is expensive. And our last story. Try to assault me over petty crap? Enjoy prison and losing your family? Some backstory. This began before COVID kicked off and has only recently ended. So my uncle was over at my house for my birthday. Both of us are gun owners. I compete in competitions and he's just the kind of guy to go to the range once a month. We'd gone shooting the previous day and only brought out a few guns because we had some technical stuff to work on with a few guns so it wasn't really a trip just to shoot. My uncle surprised me on the trip with some tannerite, which is an explosive you set off by shooting it, so we ended up blowing some crap up out there, but mostly saving it for the next day. The next day, we were packing up to actually go out shooting for real instead of spending the day tinkering, and my uncle asked me to bring one of my guns that has a very expensive and hard-to-find ammo for him to shoot a bit. I told him I only had about 20 rounds for it and would like to save them for another day since I didn't know if I'd be able to find more. Here's where things start falling apart. My uncle's known to be a bit scummy and a hothead, so he snapped and tried guilting me into bringing the gun, telling me I owe him for the Tannerite. I told him that I didn't realize I'd have to pay him back for a gift, and that if that was the case, he could just have the remaining Tannerite then, then walked back to my room and started putting away my guns, since I could tell this was pretty much going to ruin the day. This made him lose his absolute crap and start yelling and stomping about me being an ungrateful piece of crap and how he should kick my butt to teach me a lesson. At this point, I tell him to get the F out of my house if he's going to threaten me and he charges up the stairs at me. My uncle is a very large and fit man, so I grab the bear spray out of my shooting bag, the shooting range we use here is in the middle of nowhere, and pointed it at him. My uncle has been maced before, so he quickly backed down and left, damaging my door on the way out. I just went about my day after this, packing up most of the guns but loading a couple into the car because I planned to still head to the range is to not let him ruin my fun. As I'm packing up the car, a couple police cars roll up and they start shouting at me to get on the ground and they put me in handcuffs. I pretty quickly found out they were there because my uncle called and said I pointed a weapon at him and mentioned my guns. I ended up having to show the police the footage from my security camera before they let me go. 
After that day, I fully cut ties with my uncle and just moved on with my life. But I came to find out that he was talking crap about me to family members, which is when I started plotting my revenge. I knew my uncle illegally stored his restricted guns, and I knew he spent quite a bit of money on them. But I also knew the cops probably wouldn't bother since I had no proof. I found out my uncle had been shooting all the animals in his yard when he lives in the city from my grandma, who he brags and sends pictures to. One of the animals he shot was an endangered species, and I knew my grandma's phone had the picture on it, so I eventually snuck onto my grandma's phone and sent myself all the incriminating pictures, including ones of illegal guns, and reported it anonymously to the police. Today, I got my uncle arrested. Fishing game seized his cars and his guns, his wife's pretty much left him since the police raid traumatized her and the kids, and all of his gun friends have gone off grid, so he has no support. Court date and charge is unknown, but from my research, he's looking at a really long sentence. I feel absolutely no remorse, because I've always said I don't think him having access to firearms is safe since he can be violent, and he's overall a crap person. Sounds like you were doing the community a service. Guys like that always end up blowing up on someone. At least you were able to repel him. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.